Hi, this is Greg with Walnut Ridge RV. Today we're going to be doing another orientation video. Today we're going to be doing the Hideout 174RK. So this is a single axle um, hideout. So we'll start up here in the front. Of course you have your um, manual tongue jack get you on and off your truck and to do your front to back leveling. Um, we have one single four and a half gallon LP tank. And now these tanks come full when you purchase from us. Um, you don't have an auto switch over regulator obviously with one tank. So all it is is turn it on and off when you're wanting to use it and when you're not. Normally you'll have a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery behind here um, that you will need to keep an eye on. It's not maintenance free so you'll want to check on the uh, water levels say every six months or so. Um, you'll want to make sure it's charged. Now a lot of misconceptions or issues that we see a lot of times is you know, people take the unit home, they sit in the driveway, they go out the next week and it's dead. Well that's natural because you have multiple things that are always hardwired to the batteries on the inside of the campers your LP leak detector, the backlight radio, and a few different little things that will always drain that battery. So if you don't disconnect the negative off the battery or use the battery disconnect, if your trailer has one, it's gonna kill that battery fairly quickly. Um, so the best thing to do is when you, when you can, if you're just gonna park it in the driveway, is to unhook the negative, flip the battery, disconnect, and that'll help keep the battery charged. Now it's not gonna keep it charged forever. They eventually will still die because uh, it's just what batteries do when they're just sitting out and not being used. So that's something you always have to be aware of. Anytime you're plugged into your trailer or into the, you know, from the trailer to the house or a 30 amp connection or to your truck, it'll charge that battery as long as everything's hooked up properly. So um, if the battery is dead, all you have to do is go hook it up to 15 amp, 30 amp at the house and let it run all that day and then you usually charge your battery back up if it does go dead. Um, we'll move around this way. There's not too much on this side besides the slide and the storage, but we also have your water compartment. So you have a fresh water tank, which is for your um, you know, dry docking and a traveling tank. So if you want some water while you're traveling or if you're going somewhere that doesn't have a full hookup site, you can put some water in here and turn your water pump on and use the water that way. Or if you are at a full hookup site, you can hook your hose directly into this next um, station here. You always want to use your pressure. Yeah, always want to use a pressure regulator to keep the pressure stable and all at the same through every line. You don't want to blow out fittings and things like that. So um, always hook that up, hook your water into here, regulator usually at the faucet itself, run your hose from that either into your, if you're using a filter or directly into the unit, turn it on, you'll have an unlimited water supply. Now your fresh tank drain on these is always directly below usually where the fresh tank fill is. That's a question we get a lot of times too. A lot of people don't know where they're at. You go where your tank is and you look and you've got a valve on this one. Um, a lot of times they're not as easy to see as this one is. You might have to get underneath there a little bit but there will be a single hose either with a cap or a on and off valve like this one has. Um, on the slide itself, not too much to it. You have um, your slide seals which of course those need to be maintained. Uh, every couple months I'd say you spray um, rubber seal conditioner on it's just a foam spray you spray it on there and it'll help keep them pliable so they don't crack and dry rot um you have the squintex slide system so you can you could spray a light coat of um dry lubricant on these if you wanted and they'll run them in and that'll help you know, just kind of keep everything lubricated in there but you don't have to do that as often um so every I don't know, every couple months at least every six months um twice a year is the best thing to do uh, when you run the slide out, you always want to make sure when you get to your campsite that you make sure that these seals flipped so they're out like this and they're not like tucked in like that or something because water is going to get right in there and it's going to get inside the unit and that's not something you want to have to deal with. So always make sure the seals flip. Sometimes they don't, um, which isn't a big deal. Um, you know, they just doesn't do it sometime. When, one way you can prevent that is make sure when you run the slide out, you, you start from all the way in, you run it all the way out without stopping. Um, that'll help make sure the seals flip. If they don't, just flip them back by hand and uh, go on about the weekend. So we'll move around the other side now. Okay. And then, so at the rear of your unit, you have your tank dump. So you have what's labeled as your black tank and your gray tank. Black tanks are always the bigger of the pipe. So you have a three inch pipe here and a two inch pipe here. So if, you, if the labels are gone or something like that, you can always kind of tell which ones you have. Plus these ones, the handles are labeled. Um, so when you go to dump, most important thing, let's say you're going to start camping, you're going to start using your tanks. Make sure that your valves are shut all the way because the cap that's on here is watertight. So 
any if this valve was open and you're using it and everything's flushing it's all going to build up right back behind here when you take that cap off you're going to get uh, splashed with stuff that you don't want to be splashed with so always make sure that the valve is um, completely closed we have a big video on that we just posted on facebook um our service manager talking about um your dumps and how sometimes you have a little water residue behind them um, which doesn't necessarily mean there's an issue so i'd um, advise you to check that out on our facebook page because it really goes into detail about stuff like this but best way to use these after you're done camping you're at the dump sites to hook up your hose put it in the ground open your black first wait till it's completely finished close it then pull your gray that's going to uh, wash out your hose uh, with cleaner water so the last thing you touch is the shower water not the black water and that also help kind of uh, prevent any backwashing going up into the gray tank which is kind of hard but it could so, it was a fairly simple to operate back here we have a coax for cable inlet if you have a cable at the site you're hooked into you got your 30 amp non-detachable power cords just un pulls out from in here and stores back in the hole you have your uh, refrigerator access panel um, it's not too much in here you'll have to mess with every once in a while it doesn't hurt to twist these tabs pull the lid off and sweep that out bees like to get in there build nests the uh, wasps mud daubers things like that um, spider webs they can uh cobwebs and stuff like that can clog up the the lp system um in the burner chamber and stuff like that so it doesn't hurt to blow that out or clean it out every once in a while spare tire on the rear that storage back here um, which is nice and then you have your water heater Ugh. so in our water heater on this one this one does look like it's gas only so um, fairly easy to operate once you hook up to your water system before you turn it on you'll want to put your anode rod in here screw it in tight that's an inch and a sixteenth socket snug it up real good these can be kind of finicky to get in there you kind of have to play with them because the back end of the rod uh, wants to lift it up when you put it in there so you're gonna have to play with it to get it in there screw it in tight and then turn on your water it'll start filling once you do that you're gonna want to open up this valve till water starts shooting out so lift it up just hold it once water starts shooting out of there you can go ahead and close it and now you can turn it on from the inside uh, make sure your LP tanks on and no fire um, from there you just pretty much let it run um, it'll shut off when it needs to it'll come on when it needs to uh, you have two caps in here which these are usually on the unit underneath the unit there's two uh, two lines coming down which are your um, low point drains and those have to be on there the water's just gonna shoot out of there so just make sure those are on furnace exhaust you have to mess with there just always make sure you keep uh, mud dauber screens on those to keep the bees and mud daubers from building nests in there they can end up breaking parts in the squirrel cage um, now once in outlets out here of course you got the dog leash bottle opener um, see another storage up front this one is prepped for solar to charge the batteries so if you want to buy this system from zamp you can and then you have um, these are prepped for furion side view cameras also So inside we do have a mounting bracket back or not bracket but it's it's mounted so you can put a mount up here if you want for a tv then you have your coaxes for your cable um, cable and antenna this one's your antenna with a button on it with a green light that's your booster so if it's uh you are running off the antenna you want to make sure that green light's on um from there you have your slide out buttons now with that slides being a swin tech slide the best way to run that is when you if i was going to run it in right now i'd hold that button until it comes all the way in it stops and then i even like to hold the button for a couple seconds longer because the way that system works they got to catch up with each other sometimes so you'll see maybe one side starts to move before the other usually that's normal um if it if it gets out of whack it'll stop itself it'll it'll tell it it, it won't let, allow it to go any further so it really can't bind up unless something's really wrong so when I run them all the way in and all the way out, I like to hold the button just for a few seconds longer, two or three seconds, just to make sure that both sides have caught up with each other and they're gonna 
uh, all, it all seals properly. Interior lights, exterior lights, and then you have your awning extender retract, which is fairly simple. You got your cook stove back here, which is manual light, just turn it to light, and then uh, put your lighter to it. Standard microwave up top, got your stove and bed pan. Um, the refrigerator's a uh, standard Dometic refrigerator. They've been using this for a long time, this style, uh, not this, this particular model, but it's got the, the two buttons. You got on and off, and then auto or gas. I always recommend leaving it in the auto position. Um, that way it'll always run off the electric if it's there. If it's not, it'll automatically switch over to the gas side and light as long as the LP is on. So if you were plugged in, we had this going, and the power went out at the park, it would flip the gas. Now if you had food in there and you're not around, it would save the food and prevent it from uh, going bad. So on and off, auto or gas, always leave it in the auto position unless you really need to use gas only, which is pretty rare. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off for now. Below that you have your converter. It's got all your breakers in it and all your fuses on one side. Breakers are for your 110 stuff, so your outlets, your microwave, your AC, things like that, which are all labeled. And then fuses are your lights, water pump, um, fan, and you know, different stuff on your 12-volt system. So if something's ever not working, you want to check in here and check for these fuses. That's the first place you want to go. Now right here we have your thermostat. This one's going to be for the furnace separately, so it's just simple. I don't want to fire it because it's really loud, but you turn, just flip that over to wherever you'd like. And um, get kind of a temperature gauge down here, which shows it's 70 in here right now. From there, you have your water pump. If you are using the fresh tank up front, if you're hooked directly in with a constant flow of water, you don't have to do that. Uh, you have your water heater for gas. It's got a fault light on it, so it'll show you um, once it lights, this would go off. If it doesn't light after three tries, that light will stay on. So if you turn that on and a minute later, it's still on. Usually the gas just hasn't reached its point. So usually you can shut it off, turn it back on, try it again. If it still does that, make sure your LP tanks are on, make sure it's full. Um, if not, then you may have an issue, but for right now that's how, uh, that's how it works. Pretty simple. You have your battery level. When you're not plugged in, it'll tell you your battery um, level. You have your fresh tank reading, black tank reading, gray tank reading. So that's going to tell you your blacks are toilet, gray is your bathroom, sink, kitchen, sink, and shower. Black tank is really finicky. Uh, they always have been on every single camper that's ever been made. So it's something, they're not always fairly accurate, especially if you don't keep up with your tank maintenance. Tank maintenance is going to be dumping the tank after you're done each time and then cleaning it after each time using either a spray wand, since this one doesn't have a sewer flush on it, you can buy a wand that you can shove down in the toilet and it shoots out 360 degrees and helps clean the probes that are inside. Um, biggest thing is using RV toilet paper, using chemicals every time you can, um, as much as possible. Um, so even after you're done camping, if you want to fill the tank back up just by holding the foot flush down and get it full, drop chemicals in it, let them sit overnight. Um, that's probably the best thing to do. Commando is really good. It's one of the products that we sell and you can get it anywhere really, uh, RV dealers, but it's um, one of the best things for eating all that stuff off the tank. So if you ever come in here and you know you just dumped your tank, but still reading two thirds, it's, it's not really an issue. There's nothing that we can really do besides cleaning the tank, nothing that you couldn't do yourself. So um, that's a, probably one of the most common things, uh, calls we get. Is something to do with that tank reading after we know it's done it's dumped so keep up with that bathrooms not too much in there you can probably look at it by yourself there's a toilet's a standard foot flush and then you have your GFCI outlet on the uh, wall in there for all the outlets that are near water just like at home let's see there's not too much else in here you do have manual control AC which again I'm not gonna fire because it's really loud but um, it's got Pretty much your blue side which is cold and then you have a, just a fan only side you have a temperature control on this side and then you can open and close you can open up the sides have it blow whichever direction you'd like you've got usb outlets and 110 outlets on both sides of the murphy bed murphy bed's easy it's spring assisted this comes down you drop your couch like this you can drop it Flip your mattress over and you're good to go to sleep. That's the best thing about it. Automatic locks back and self in place. Put your couch back and you're back to entertain it. So, um, that's pretty much it um, for this hideout. And uh, we'll see you next week.